Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're looking at the Storch Filter by Slate Digital. And it's got a neat thing that it does that other filter plugins don't do. And it's that it makes transitioning effects and filters at the same time super easy. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's go, let's turn this on. And right now this is on all, all the orchestral stuff in this track. So to start off, here's the track. Here's what it sounds like. So that's what we're working with here. So if we just solo up the orchestral stuff, this is everything coming through contact um, that's responsible for the orchestral elements. And let's just go ahead and toss storage filter. Now we're not gonna use it this way, but I'm gonna use it on here just as like a demo because it's really obvious what it's doing. So you have a filter and if we move it down, it'll filter it. So we've got a low pass, a bam pass here. High pass. There is quite an aggressive resonance if we pump this. And then there's different slopes that you can have. So you could have like a really aggressive slope. So if you intend to have some bleed through the high end, you're gonna to wanna to go with a slope that has, you know, well, in this case, it's a low pass. So it's gonna let more of the stuff above it through. And if you have it, you know, at a higher slope, it will let less of that stuff through. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with a times two and bring the resonance way down. I'm not interested in a very high resonance. There is also an auto filter down here. And what this will do is have the LFO control how the filter moves. So right now we're at a 4 16th with a depth of 100%. So it's going to move it all the way. And we have a sine wave driving it. So that's the gist of the filter. Pretty straightforward, just a great filter. If you're looking for a really easy filter to just put on, you can just grab this one and away you go. And there's a bunch of effects that also take advantage of this auto filter stuff down here, which can be pretty nice. At the top though, there are a bunch of effects. And we've got a verb, a chorus, a saturator, a spread, and a phaser. So let's just look at them individually. But what makes this sort of interesting is the when the filter is all the way open, meaning you know, you're not affecting the sound, the no sound's being filtered out, um, the effects will have no effect if we just listen. It sounds like nothing, but if we bring the filter down and then play it, suddenly we have all this reverb there that wasn't there before, but here's the chorus. And if we combine the verb and the chorus, we'll hear that chorusy verb as we move it up. So by moving this around as it plays, we get this almost smearing effect of uh, this trail of what's going on here uh, because we have our verb on and then all these other effects. If we have like the saturator, here's what the saturator sounds like. Here's the spread. And then here's the phaser. So combining them in, is where it gets interesting. And it's it's extra interesting because it's what's being filtered out that's getting the effect. So if we go ahead and go for something like a band pass and stick it here, we're gonna hear sounds on both sides of this that'll take on whatever effect we pick. So if you're looking for an interesting double layer, something like that, where you, you're just gonna, you know, send it out in parallel, mix it in, and have an extra layer that's a bit thinner that has some of this stuff on there, maybe for an interesting spatial image, you could do that, and it's super fast and easy. There is an effects boost, which allows you to sort of put more of the effects in. If there's not enough, we could boost it up. So here, we'll just put a, a bunch of verb back.
So that can be pretty handy. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with a low pass. And one of the ways you can use this is to, to fade in elements. And this will make it so that you can have a verb come in with the filter move. But once the filter's open, the verb is gone and you have your direct sound just coming through like it normally would. So it simplifies the process because now I don't need to grab a verb and automate that and then figure out how I'm gonna combine it with a filter and in which ways I wanna do that. I could just have this on here and just automate one thing and away I go. So I have here, let me go ahead, we're gonna bypass this for now because this is, this is on everything and I don't want it on everything. I have this choir that comes in um, and it sounds like this. Let me go ahead and find the choir in the mixer here. It's over here. Actually already has a filter on it. If I open it all the way up, that's what it sounds like. And the effects I have here are a chorus, gives it a little bit of a detune effect, a verb, and a spread. So what we're gonna do is, if I have it just come in straight up, like if I just have all the orchestral stuff again, and we just listen to this, where it comes in. It's okay how it comes in, but I'd really like to have it start off with less high end and sort of fade in a little bit. So what we're gonna do is let's solo this up. I've already got it on here and let's go ahead and browse parameters and we're gonna move the storage filter cutoff control and it will be highlighted. We're going to create an automation clip and now we can close this, we won't need it again. And we have this cutoff control here and I want this to be right at this like right around here, around like 400. So let's just set this and move the control point. And if you do it where your cursor's at, it'll show you exactly the value you're at. So let's go ahead and set that. Yeah, right around there is good. And we're going to have it fade in over time, like so, and maybe have it be a little bit, um, what is this, logarithmic? No, logarithmic is the other way, exponential. I'll have it be a little bit exponential. So let's listen to the choir now. and it just plays that one phrase. But now we have this really nice fade in. It doesn't come in all sudden. For example, before we had this. So it just came in like right away. And the other thing we could consider here is our resonance. Maybe we want a less intense resonance. And I'm going with a less aggressive slope because I do want some of that bleed. I don't want it to have the choir um, so starkly separated from everything else. So I want some bleed in as it opens up that bleed will come in handy because it'll just sort of increase in brightness as opposed to sounding like a really resonancy filter. So here it is with our, our reduced resonance. I think I'm gonna want something more like this. And in fact, let's boost the effects just a, a smidge more, maybe a little more verb. And there you go, no fiddling with an extra verb chorus or a spread. Um, thing. There's, there's various stereo shaping plugins you could use for this, various chorus and various verbs, but now it's just right here. It's one continuous move and it does exactly how I, I wind up making a lot of these things like by myself anyways, which is transitional elements where I just want things to have the effect while they're transitioning in or out and then I don't use it again. So it's kind of nice to have it all just sort of wrapped up into one package. So let's go ahead and hear it with everything. So here it is. Um, with everything, let's do a before and after. So here it is before, and we'll start from measure seven. All right, here it is after. So just listening to it after, I realize it is quite a bit, it doesn't stick out enough right here, but I like the effect that it brings in a little bit more. So let's go, let's just boost this. And this is something, let's, let's play it here and find a nice level for this. Somewhere, I think right around there is gonna be nice. And of course, this is something I'd have to listen to in context, get it from maybe further back, running into the part so I could see is this something 
that I want. And I might consider, you know, setting this a little bit higher if it's not quite bright enough. But I, I really like this fade in a lot more. It sounds a lot more natural and not so sudden. And there you go. That's one of the great uses, in my opinion, for the Storch filter. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know down below. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos. And have a blessed day.